The Stars and Stripes show is brought to you by the U.S. Embassy. Well, it's Gabs FM powered to engage your world. And of course, welcome to the Stars and Stripes radio show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Embassy in partnership with Gabs FM. And of course, today we're talking about shared culture. This is where we highlight the bilateral relationship between the U.S. government and the BW government. And of course, cultural preservation is of significant importance to Botswana for several reasons. As it contributes to the country's global brand in various ways, we do know that there's a huge demand for Africa. African content, African culture globally. And of course, uh, Botswana has a rich cultural heritage and preserving it helps to maintain the country's identity, promote tourism and contribute to global cultural diversity. And of course, these are some important conversations to have. Preservation of identity, Botswana's diverse culture cultures and traditions and of course languages are an integral part of the country's identity. Samantha and I have spoken at length about the Kotla system. Yes, we have. And how and it how it's was. been patented patented in a country far far away in the uh, european country <laughs> and that is the importance of understanding is that uh, the new diamonds is who we are mm. the new diamonds is our culture the new diamond is what we need to preserve and of course the theme of today's particular conversation is the u.s ambassador's fund for cultural preservation and of course as we cross into the meet america policy discussion segment we are speaking to naomi uh Tso established opinion leaders program specialist did i get it correct ah. correct is it it's not mm. naomi Mm-mm. back to said <laughs> please Just give him a break <laughs> please thank you how are you letting <laughs> welcome to the show and th- thank you so much for taking time you know i'm especially excited about this because number one we're talking about funding mm-hmm. and we're talking about funding to preserve our culture mm. that is such an important conversation look please just tell us about you know your mandate at the u.s embassy and what you do there okay Generally, I manage a portfolio in, under the Public Diplomacy Office, mm-hmm. uh, which focuses on progr- professional exchange programs. And I share this portfolio with others. But okay. for the purpose of today, I would like to focus on this particular program that we are promoting, that we have a competition open. Okay. Uh, so I also work with uh people who are in the arts industry, people who are in the cultural space. Mm. And so that's the reason that brings me here today. Uh, So it's only a component of what other things that I do for the U.S. Embassy. Generally, I connect the U.S. and Botswana in this industry to exchange their cultures and learn about each other. Well, in my my opinion, you're the most, most important a person at the U.S. Embassy because wow. without culture, no, culture is such an important component of, I don't think you can even operate in diplomacy without understanding the culture. culture of the people. You can't. Yeah. Mm, definitely. I'm loving this conversation. And I think let's get straight into, you know, what we're talking about. We're talking about the U.S. Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation. What exactly is that? Okay. This is a program that was initiated by the U.S. Department of State, in a nutshell, the U.S. government, has seen a purpose to promote and to preserve culture in other countries. This is a way to show that U.S. government has another image Mm -hmm. and is trying to show the respect for those cultures because you want the next generations to know where they come from, oh, no, matter, no, no matter which part of the world they are coming from. Mm. And uh, so it is the U.S. government's effort through this uh, fund that was uh, mandated through the Congress that in 20, 2000, they decided that uh, every year, 150 countries uh, that are considered less developed countries mm will be benefiting from this program. So Botswana has been benefiting from this program since that time. Since the year 2000? Since the year 2000. If you recall the time when the Tzodilo Hill was uh, under consideration for the listing of the UNESCO heritage, um, 
they were funded uh, by facilitation of the Botswana National Museum. Mm -hmm. um, there was a project that was helping to, I would call it, resuscitate mm -hmm. <laughs> the sand art on those hills. Uh, and several other things like preserving the skills that uh, the elderly around that area had to ensure that, you know, that rock art does not disappear. So that was the first project. And so far we have had eight projects till now. Wow, eight. Yes. Let's talk about, you know, what kind of projects um, does this particular uh, fund, which is the U.S. Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation, what kind of um, projects does this funding speak to? Okay. So we are looking at projects that are preserving the culture. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to try and simplify and even blend in Sudwana. Mm. <laughs> Please. So I make it uh, clear to our listeners mm. what kind of projects would fit under this fund. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at projects that have no religious importance. Okay. We are looking at museum collections and museums themselves like a museum building if it's existing and it needs to be renovated. Mm. Uh not to build a new building. Okay. But renovating. So an existing a museum yes. that requires renovation. To make it functional Emma. and protect mm. the collections in it. Emma. Uh, th those are kind of the projects that we are funding. Aside, others will consider ruins. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say ruins, I will remind you of the old Palace church building church, yeah. Emma. Uh, in Malaga. Uh, so... Uh, but I'm not talking about my daughter Abu Naulu. Ago hora chosa kana ago hora senau. Ibu aga my daughter Alonghore belongs to a community of high importance to the community that have a public. There's public interest in them. Uh, so if let's say they have cultural importance. They, they tell something, a story about where that particular group comes from, how it came from wherever it was coming to settle where it settles. Mm. Uh, when when they, were, they settled there, there probably was something going on at that time. And when they dig around, they find there are certain things that tell the story before the actual group settled there. So... There's, there are stories being told before stories mm. that uh, can be discovered through this fund uh, for, for those historic sites. So we are looking at historic sites. We are looking at uh, collections. We are looking at museums. But we are also looking at expressions, your, your dance, your music, the food. Um, I just want to caution, though, that we cannot fund a project that is a standalone I will want to give an example like someone wants to run a festival of choirs mm -hmm. and so you want to record the different choirs and then you have a festival and a competition. Um, it, it has to be beyond just the festival. It has to be beyond the choirs. We want to know what is the story about those choirs. Mm. When they sing or the way they dance, does it say anything about the history of the people in that environment? Does it tell anything about the season that the, the, the community is living at that particular time? What is important really? What is the, what is the aspect of this thing? If, if, if I bring in a, a dance by a foreign dance <laughs> and... Um, I, I come into that place. Is there something unique that if we do not document that particular style in, in that environment, we will be missing? So that, those are the kind of things that uh, the project can cover. So what I wanted to say was, yes, you can document, but it has to be part of a larger project. Yeah. For example, if there are elderly women uh, that you feel the skills are going to go, as they age, these days I also die when I'm young. <laughs> but uh, you, if if there's transfer of skills, uh, 
to ensure that those skills are not lost mm. and they are important in that particular culture. Those are the kind of things that we want to see documented. Document the training. Someone is tra taking someone through the steps, showing them and explaining why this is happening the way that it is happening. And then um, we know that that can even develop a curriculum that someone can use in the, with the, the next generations. Someone else will come 20 years when I'm gone or 30 years when I'm gone, but they will still learn that um, this particular style was used for expressing something mm. or a season, or this food was eaten for a particular season, a particular reason. So those are the kind of projects that we are looking at. And we are open uh, to questions. People can reach us via email. Uh, we have an, a, a, a website, US Embassy Raboroni. Uh, in that website, we have an announcement with a number of documents that we encourage before someone attempts to submit their nomination, uh, their application, they must look at the documents and mm. understand one, the process, two, uh, the criteria that is applied. And, and secondly, thirdly, um, the, 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 the time frame that mm. the, the project should be expected to start and to end. Mm -hmm. Our financial year starts in October of the following year. So we are in a new financial year. So when someone looks at our budget form, uh, they should have that in mind that they will be applying for a project that will probably start in our new year, which yeah. will be October 2024, 2024. Mm. not uh, a project that will start in April. In any case, between now and and, and between now and July, we will still be going through this process yes. where we are reviewing applications, answering questions on which uh, whoever had had submitted or even answering back to Washington, mm. the applications that will have nominated. Mm. So people should know that this is a partnership with the U.S. ambassador or the U.S. embassy. The application is under the U.S. ambassador. Mm -hmm. And so for, so he is competing with other ambassadors yes. in the number of countries that I have mentioned. So we are critically looking at this because eventually if the project is funded, Congress will will expect a report yes. from Botswana and uh, from the people above us as to how that project has conserved uh, the, 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 the culture in, and how much money was spent, what impact it has brought to the people because then that is a promise to the US people mm -hmm. that when you go to Botswana you are going to find this which we spend your tax money and uh, and and funded so there's a history that you will find about that country let me ask you this follow up question are there opportunities for creatives in terms of um, doing documentaries that speak to cultural preservation or our heritage in 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 within this fund Yes, there are opportunities for mm. them to apply. Okay, great. Uh, but they need to apply as part of a project. It yes. has to be a larger project. Yes, of course. So if it's music, is dance, is whatever expression, is documentation of a language. Yes. Like I said, there, there needs to be skills transfer process in it that is documented. Mm. There needs to be... Also, issues of accessibility as to whether people will be able to access that or not. Mm. Um, so that takes me to answer the question of who applies. Mm -hmm. You cannot be an individual. So you cannot have Naomi uh, apply for this project and qualify. Mm. You cannot have a business apply. Mm. We are looking for non-governmental organizations that are registered or government uh, ministries and departments, they all need to, to provide documentation mm -hmm. to show that they are registered and that they are able to manage a project, whatever the size that it is, uh, uh, and make the impact that uh, it is expected of it. So we are looking at projects that, and we are talking US dollars because we are talking US money. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we are talk, we are looking at projects of ten thousand US dollars mm -hmm. to five hundred thousand US dollars. Wow! 
And so we were excited and looking forward to receiving applications from Botswana organizations. And I want to say, as a Motswana, I really would like to see uh, the seriousness that the applicants are putting in those applications. Mm. Uh, sitting on the other side of the table, uh, advocating for those proposals, I will be proud not for, for me to be saying, to, to be rationalizing a project that is going to buy a vehicle to run a festival of choirs Yes, for the entire year. I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I like choirs, mm. but I'm using them as an example, not yeah. because I don't like them. Mm. And I hope I'm not offending anybody. Just I'm, I just try to demonstrate yes. that um, it's not possible to have a festival uh, for 500,000 uh, in a year and you buy a vehicle to run around the country yes. <laughs> and conduct that mm. and expect that that is what will be feasible. Yes. Uh, so I can give examples of projects that we have already funded, uh, and I think we're going to have one of our beneficiaries from this fund uh, participate at some point today. Um, we have sponsored the Putari Kobo Museum, uh, and oh, that wow. is the museum in Muchuki. Yeah, Muchu. That is an old building oh, wow. of, uh, I think it's 1902, if, 19, wow. if not 1912 school, uh, national school, that was turned into a museum. At the time that it was funded, uh, the building was breaking up, like you have the ceilings falling, water coming through the roof. Uh, so they needed to improve the building. They needed to improve the storage of the collections at the museum. Uh, we have funded Kama Memorial, and that's one of the guests, I believe. Uh, I'll leave her to talk about wh what they did. Emma. But we have done other, other projects elsewhere, as I say, a total of eight of them. And all of them are different in, in, mm -hmm. in their many ways. Uh, though we are known maybe to be more favorable of historic sites yes mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's beyond us um it be, it's because we are working within the parameters and whatever else that we will have selected as our panel within the embassy though we have other people who are reviewing us two different panels above us mm -hmm. back in the u.s to make sure that this is within the parameters of the afcp and as I say, it's got the eyes of the Congress, and so it has to be done properly. Well, let's get the FM power to engage your world. Any last words would you like to add on, Samantha? Is there anything you'd like to ask? I'm, I'm just smiling at my Naomi because of the, the gems she's dropping right now. Fantastic. Yeah. Last words, and what would you say in closing on behalf of the U.S. Embassy? Remember, today's theme is the U.S. Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation. It's an important conversation, and of course, this speaks to different different components of who we are, including conservation of historical ruins or museums that have um, require renovation, and of course, um, an archaeological survey as a component of a preservation plan, preservation management planning for a site, and documentation of sites in a region for preservation purposes. It's a brilliant fund, and of course, the ceiling of this fund is $500,000, and of course, the Entry number is ten thousand dollars, and of course, in closing, anything you'd like to add to this? Okay, so there are two stages to the application process. At the moment, when they go on the website, they will find a lot of stuff that we have provided them to give them enough information. Yes, but we are receiving concept notes. So as they go on the website, they will find a concept form. Okay, please, please follow that concept form. And that's what we want to see, and that's what we will eventually submit. That's stage one. Stage two is if our concept notes are successful, we'll then be advised to move to the next level, which will then be a full-fledged proposal. Mm -hmm. And so don't worry about too many other things. Worry about understanding the criteria. Know that the deadline for submission of concept notes is due, uh, January 15th. Uh, in the meantime, if there's anything you don't understand before the 22nd of December, <laughs> please do send us an email and ask us or call us. We'll answer your questions. Uh, but please, we are looking forward to your applications. We are very excited and want to see these projects being implemented next year. We want to preserve what's on our heritage. Well, it's Gabs FM Power to engage you. Well, thank you so much. And we're going to move along. I don't understand.
Kidule Mono, Calaburaro, Cautena, Landani, Calabune, Caviteran, Macua, Atikam, Adonica. How you say? This one is Stampor Reba Tuan, and of course, taking us to 1238 across the nation. If you've just joined us, welcome to the Thousand Stripes Radio Show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Embassy in partnership with Gabs FM. And of course, today we're talking hashtag shared culture. Mm-hmm. And the theme of today's conversation is the U.S. Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation. And I'm telling you, the ceiling is $500,000. Although there is some criteria that you must follow, if you're looking for more information, you can go to www dot bw dot us embassy dot gov and get more information about this particular fund look a very exciting conversation because on the line this afternoon we are joined by somebody oil has gone through the process and actually brought to life the project um on the line ribua lehasi kidi saying who worked on the kama memorial third museum curator hi so welcome to the show um thank you very much how are you doing on this beautiful Friday afternoon? Well, I'm very, very um, fine. Um, it's a very beautiful weather, mm. you know, cool and wet. So I'm good. Thank you. You know, let's just get straight into it. I'll introduce a little bit, but I think it's best, Ruta, from you. Just, you know, tell us who you are and what you do. Okay. Um, thank you again. Um, my name is um, Hasi Kidi Seng. I work as um, um, a curator or manager at Hamad Zain Memorial Museum. Mm-hmm. Um, my job entails um, administrative duties um, as well as um, preservation of the Bahamamadu culture and mm-hmm. heritage. Um, Hape, uh, I want to try and simplify it for the listeners. Um, I manage, you know, collections an artifact, you know, um, as well as, um, you know, care for, it, for them to ensure that they maintain their integrity and condition. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Look, uh, let's talk about, tell us about the project and, of course, uh, what was funded under, of course, the Ambassador's uh, Fund for Cultural Preservation and why also, I would also like you to encourage other Botswana to say what the importance of this opportunity, obviously, courtesy of the U.S. Embassy. Okay. Um, our museum got funded um, in 2015. Um, it was actually a two-year project. Mm-hmm titled Preservation and Restoration of Kama Family and Desi Head Archives of the Post-Colonial Period Cultural Preservation. Um, this involved digitizing um, these historical peoples um, for easier access. Okay. More museum, more museum, we actually have um, what we call archives. We have two sets of important collection um, of papers and documents. The first set is the Betty Head papers, and the second set is the Kama family papers. Both these collections include documents and photographs that are a valuable resource of historical, literary, and cultural significance. Um, they provide unique evidence of and insight into Botswana and the Southern African region during the colonial and post-colonial period. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so you were asking me for a, uh, how can I encourage Baba uh, Mui? To take okay. advantage of this funding and why it's important in line with, you know, preserving uh, our culture. Okay. Um, Bajana Baharuna, um, all I can say to you is, you know, this um, AFCP or this fund is very, very, um, you know, helpful. Um, you know, that it helps preserve our, our history. Um, we must remember that our, when we talk about our history, we are talking about um, the national treasure, you know, mm-hmm. and um, Haiki Libelela, um, you know, the, the fund that, that has helped us. Um, these histori- historical documents, regarding, um, the, without them, or if they are not preserved, they will go into waste. Mm. And 
once they are wasted, um, Botswana will have nothing um, to refer to. So all I can say, Gore, um, the fund is there. The forms are very, very, very easy, you know, and um, they are unbe- unbelievably easy, you know, straightforward. Um, well, now we got funded um, $78,000 um, dollars close to $800,000 then mm. Mm. yes um, we were able to digitize the document so now you can actually make use of this fund to you know preserve history of Botswana you know so get 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 um, Hase, um, I think another important question is, um, can you just tell us a little bit about experience alone when you are applying for this fund? Um, just just walk us through it. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, you know, the, the, the ASCP is actually one of the, you know, easiest and straightforward um, funds um, I've come across. Mm. They don't need you know, that essay-like proposal, you know, mm-hmm. you need um, tons and tons of documents to feel all they need is like, you know, your, your idea, mm-hmm. concept, you know, from, you know, and that with that, um, you'll be done, you know. Um, it's actually in two phases. You submit this concept, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you know it's, it's very, very straightforward. It's very short. And, um, if they like your idea, they go back to you and tell us, you know, tell you to expand it. And the local nehate is not really a lot. So, and it does not even take um, a lot of time. So, if you know you have a brilliant idea, you know, so present it to them. And I tell you, you know, it's so easy. The rest is history, as many like to say. Let me offer you this opportunity to share your parting statement. And, of course, in closing, what would you say and what would you like to say in, to the U.S. Embassy and, of course, the American people for their investment in, of course, culture? Okay. Um, all I can say to um, AFCP, to the American people, is, you know what, um, thank you so much um, for respecting our culture. Thank you so much um, for making it easier, you know, for us to preserve what is ours, you know. And um, this um, fund really makes a huge impact to organizations such as ours. They're um, linking, you know, we really, really struggle with funding. So thank you so much to um, American Embassy. Well, thank you so much. Have a great afternoon, okay? Thank you so much. Um, uh, well, at the end of the day, it is what it is. And th- those are opportunities that um, the U.S. Embassy provides or facilitates on behalf of the U.S. government for Botswana. I'd like to encourage many, many nonprofit organizations to come together and go for a greater cause. You know, language is one of them. You know, definitely. I think of a Nikira, um, Mikim Harakere, there's another, well, maybe I'm giving ideas. I don't know. Give, give, you might <laughs> as well, as well give, give ideas. You know, the whole, the whole issue of, um, Basadi Bakolo Bai Longhora and communities, and they know, uh, Husidila, women who are expecting. Mm. Like, that's such a, an intricate part of our culture, and yet, where is the preservation of that? And you know, we, we've always said that it's so important to document these yes, things. And yes. at the end of the day, like I said, the Ambassador Fund for Cultural Preservation, starting at $10,000, and of course the ceiling is $500,000. And of course you can go to www.bw.usembassy.gov to get more information about this particular fund. We just heard from a testimonial point of view that the application form is not she, so complex. She said it's very very easy. You should not be intimidated. So, and so I, I, I sincerely hope that Botswana really try and do this. Any last words? I look forward to reading those applications. Um, um, anybody with questions until December 22nd, uh-huh. an email, a call. We are here to help you. We, we are looking for you to partner with us. Thank you. Well, good afternoon.